Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Queen of Clean. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. We have a really special Les Paul Custom today. This is a factory stock 3P90 Les Paul. And holy cow, this is one of the best clean sounding guitars I have had. Now, I'll be honest, the dirty tones on this one didn't do a lot for me. And we're going to go over a few other things that I probably would have done differently had I have done the custom order for this guitar. But this, it definitely replaced the hole in my heart when I sold the flame top red one with the maple fretboard. This one came in just like a day or two after that, and it's like, you know, these guitars make me think really highly of modern day Gibsons. Now, if you've been watching my channel, you know I like the freaky stuff, so this is right up my alley. So what is this guitar? Well, this was a guitar that was actually built with the Made to Measure program that Gibson offers. This particular one was done at the Music Zoo. So what the Made to Measure program is basically like you get to choose from all these different puzzle pieces and make your guitar that's been in your dreams. The program at the Music Zoo offers five different Les Paul shapes, one SG, three flying Vs, two semi hollows, an explorer, and six big arch tops. But it's gotta be something that they make first of all. And then they give you the options for the fretboard. It doesn't sound like they give you the option of ebony, or maybe it's just really expensive, and that's why we have rich light on this one. But apparently the Music Zoo wanted to create this guitar because it was listed on their website for a whopping $6,860, and then the actual sale price was $5,532.26. So that's quite pricey for having such a unique Les Paul, but that's what it's going to cost you if you want one of these. This was the only one the Music Zoo made. Now I did call them to confirm that and they did say yes, this was the only one they made. However, they said that Gibson's wait time is about two months right now. So if you want to buy one of these brand new to your own specs, you definitely can. So what are the specs to this guitar? You've got your normal maple top, it's carved like a normal Les Paul Custom, a solid mahogany body, and a mahogany neck with what I would consider is kind of a medium profile. But you do have a rich light fretboard on here. Sometimes rich light can look really dry like on the modern Flying V. But honestly, I just wipe them down with a little bit of Goo Gone Cleaner and it seems to make them look just as good as ebony in my eyes. So our pickups are three Soap Bar P90 pickups. And you're probably wondering how this was wired. It's wired like a traditional three pickup Les Paul. That means you have a neck position, meaning the neck, the bridge position, meaning the bridge, and the middle position is a combination of the middle and bridge pickup in kind of an out of phase tone. So if you like those kind of stratty sounds from a normal three pickup humbucker Les Paul, Imagine that with a P90 and you have tonal bliss, you can get those strattier sounds even closer while having a Gibson. They decided to go with chrome hardware and this one has a Nashville style bridge with a normal stop tailpiece. It also features chrome Grover tuners. The finish on this one came from the factory as vintage white, so it already had a little bit of a creamed tint to it. Now here's where this guitar gets freaky. Now remember I said this has a Nashville styled bridge. So when I pulled this neck pickup out and saw a long neck tenon, I got very confused there. Typically if you're gonna go for a traditional long neck tenon on a Les Paul Custom, you're gonna go for the also historically correct ABR1 bridge. I'm not sure why they decided to mix match that. If this guitar had an ABR1, I think it would look very vintage. Whereas this kind of captures a more modern Les Paul. So you've got kind of a mashup of some 50s and some modern. And the only other thing I would have changed on this is I would have went for a pure white finish. This vintage white as they call it, 
It looks a little bit too yogurt yellow creamy to me. I really think this guitar would have been more visually striking if it was more of a stark white. Now, I'm not dissing the finish. I still do enjoy it, and it would have looked like this eventually anyways, but I kind of wish it would have started pure white. So you're probably wondering, where does somebody even get the idea to make this guitar? Has anybody ever thought of a 3P90 Les Paul Custom before? The answer to that question, yes. Gibson actually did make one of these in 1958. It is famously featured in a very popular Les Paul book called The Early Years to the Les Paul Legacy. And in that book, you can see a guitar that looks very similar to this one. The only main visual differences here is the pick guard actually comes in between the P90s right here. It's not just straight cut across like on that vintage example. Once again, the ABR1 bridge, and they had more of the bonnet styled knobs instead of the speed knobs. So yes, Gibson did make one of these in the 50s. Now it was on a custom order basis, so you're never gonna see that guitar ever come up for sale. And if you do, I bet it would be worth somewhere between forty to $60,000. So that makes the $5,500 price tag for this one brand new seem a little bit nicer. Three P90s on Gibsons. These are not used a lot. So let's talk about some models that also feature three P90s. The very first one that came to my mind as far as a three P90 Gibson is the legendary ES5. That is basically a hollow bodied guitar built to basically be an electrified L5. That one had three dog-eared P90s and it had an interesting switching system. They eventually renamed it the Switchmaster because of that and that model was first built in 1949. Now right before the first white custom like this one was built, there was a custom order for a guy named Johnny Gray. His is a black Les Paul custom with three P90s, but here's the twist. He only has three knobs on the front, and then instead of a three pickup selector switch, he has a master tone up here. So that means in order to select which pickup he wants, he would simply roll the volume off of one, and then he can have any combination of the three pickups. The next model that I thought about is the Firebird 3 from the mid 60s. Now here's another cool one. In the mid 1980s, they did something called the Explorer 3. That's kind of just your standard Explorer for that era and it has three P90 pickups. I would love to review one of those one day. Looking into more recent guitars, the Peter Frampton Custom Shop Junior of the mid 2000s had three dog ear P90s and the very recent Gary Clark SG Signature SGs also had this kind of pickup layout. So this guitar, I, I fell in love with this thing. It has beautiful clean tones. Now I will say this, when you put this on a crunch channel or something distorted, I wasn't as big of a fan of this guitar. It just didn't quite have that sound I was looking for. Personally, I would switch this bridge pickup out for like a P90 sized humbucker or something because it just doesn't quite have the hotness I would want. It's like almost there, but not there. However, on clean, all of these positions just sound beautiful. Neck pickup, you're going to want to stay on this thing for days. Just that beautiful, clean, creamy tone. It really matches the finish of this guitar. Then you switch it to the middle and BAM! You've got those Fender-esque sounds. It sounds fantastic. Now clean on the bridge, yeah, it sounds pretty good. It's a little sharper sounding. But again, for my own personal taste, I would suggest maybe something a little bit hotter. Now I tried to get this pickup to sound hotter by getting it closer to the strings, but I was surprised to find that Gibson did not actually put springs behind these P90s they kind of routed the channels so there would just be one fixed position. Now I went ahead and added some springs to kind of get it a little bit more to my own personal preferences, but honestly I couldn't get this bridge pickup to go any higher. But now you can at least adjust this middle pickup up and down a little bit better. So overall, I would tell you to try one of these if you ever see one, but 
to be honest, this is probably one of the very few Les Paul Customs you will ever see with three P90s short of custom ordering your own. But if you do ever see a Gibson with three P90s, definitely check them out. I am a huge fan of this guitar. It really speaks to me, but maybe it's just because it's a weird, bizarre model. So now that I've talked about it, let's hear how it sounds. <laughs>
that we know how this guitar sounds, let's go ahead and see its condition. The face of the headstock really doesn't have anything to go over here. You've got some very minor string change wear, but for the most part it is very clean. You've got kind of a medium styled fret wire on this one, and very minimal fret wear if any at all. Again, you do have a rich light fretboard, but I think it looks pretty good now that I've cleaned it up. Now this guitar was built by Gibson in 2017, but it wasn't sold in the store until 2018. So I believe that kind of makes this a 2017 model. You can see you've got a small little ding right there, but for the most part, the original owner of this guitar, he didn't play it too much and he decided he wanted to sell it but just some light scratches from play wear and a few minor dings on the top. Nothing too extreme. Back of the headstock, the serial number is CS800198. There are no breaks, cracks, or repairs, but take a close look at the finish here and you can kind of see some red streaking in it. It's almost like somehow the finish absorbed some of the pink dye of the lift and reissue case. It pretty much goes all the way up the neck into about this area. I'm not sure once again if that was the case or maybe a stand did that somehow because you can also see those light lines right here along the edges. So it's there, but is it overly present? Mm, not really, but it definitely is good to know about. The neck profile on this one is very rounded feeling. I wouldn't quite call it a 50s neck, but it's not really a 60s. It's definitely closer to that 50s feel, so if you like a slightly substantial neck without being over the top, that's kind of what this one is. The back of the guitar, no major buckle rash or worming or anything. You've got a few small scratches here or there, but for the most part, again, very clean and all original. Now inside the case, there is a regular black version of this, but I just left that on simply because they're kind of cool. I like these medallions that they use. It kind of makes the guitar feel a little bit more high end. The sides of the guitar are in good shape. Again, you've got some very minor play wear on this guitar. There's nothing major. I would say the worst thing on this guitar is probably that staining to the finish from the case or whatever did it. But overall, this is just a really nice guitar. Now being a newer guitar, it's not gonna glow a lot, but you could at least see if something was touched up. Everything's looking good on the front. The sides are also looking the way I would expect to see them. And the back is also looking good. And honestly, the finish on the back of the neck's not really glowing any differently either, so no more clues as to what could have caused that staining there. But there are no breaks, cracks, or repairs to this example. And once again, I love the binding on the headstock of Modern Day Customs. It kind of has that LED neon glow to them. This guitar comes in its original Gibson Lifton reissue case. The only problem with this version of the case is they are just too beautiful to ever want to gig. You're sad when you get marks on them. Now this one's got a few stray marks here or there, but nothing too bad. This is the most desirable version of this modern day case because you have all normal latches, as opposed to this style that has the clasps. The interior of this case is a pink color, so it definitely fits the fingerprints of what is on the back of the guitar, but I guess we'll never know for 100% sure. Some people think it's these little tabs that stain the finish, but that's not where the staining is at on this one. But what's great about this version of the Lift and Reissue case is it has a double neck rest. Now, that's not as historically accurate as the 50s Liftons, but as far as a protective case, that's definitely much better to see. And here you can see all the case candy this guitar still retains in the compartment in the case. This includes the certificate of authenticity and some of the other little freebies. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this three pickup Les Paul Custom, you're gonna break my heart in the process, but feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash T-R-O-G-L-Y-S. T -R -O -G -L -Y -S. Thank you, Trogo Dice, for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you tomorrow on the next episode.
Take care.